This is AMD's RX 6500 XT. It's their newest graphics card targeting budget PC gamers with a suggested retail price of $200 US. But we'll actually have to wait and see what the street price is really is once it's released because I don't know of anyone who actually believes that these will be widely available at that price. The model I have right here is actually the Power Color Fighter, uh, which is one of the more basic ones that tend to go for closer to MSRP on launch than the other models. It lacks things like a backplate. Uh, it has a very basic shroud with no LEDs or RGB. This one in particular has a noticeably smaller cooler and shroud as well and the two fans on it are 82 millimeters which isn't the worst thing in the world because for my testing the temps and noise levels on this card were perfectly acceptable and if anything this is a much better approach for these lower end cards uh, to help save consumers money rather than slapping on like these huge coolers and huge shrouds with LEDs and RGB and all the bells and whistles and driving the price up. With that said though, there are some glaring issues with this card. Not the Power Color Fighter model specifically, but with AMD's RX 6500 XT as a whole. So let's talk about it. The 6500 XT is going to get plenty of coverage from a lot of the bigger outlets out there, comparing it to a ton of different cards. You know, like Gamers Nexus, Hardware and Box, Tom's Hardware, among many others. They have these awesome, huge, extensive bar charts that compare it to like 20 other graphics cards with the exact same test bench that they've been using for years, with the same games, with the same settings. As a smaller one person channel with limited resources and time, I can't even come close to repeating something like that here on this channel. So I had to get creative with my approach for this video while still bringing you worthwhile information. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. There's this meme going around on the internet that the RX 6500 XT is a re-release of the 5500 XT, which was a re-release of the RX 580, which that was a re-release of the RX 480, which was a re-release of the R9 390, which was a re-release of the R9 290X. You get the point. A lot of people out there feel like we've seen this card from AMD multiple times in the past. Now, of course, these aren't identical rebadges because each of the cards I just named are from different generations and architectures, but they're being bunched together because they operate within a similar performance range to the 6500 XT, that is like, 1080p medium settings or so in current titles. Unfortunately, I don't own any of those cards previously listed. I did at one point in time, but as the pandemic went on, I slowly let them go to friends, family, and even strangers for videos. But luckily, a friend of mine was able to loan me out his 8GB XFX RX 480 to make this video. While this is an 8GB version of the RX 480 and the 6500 XT is only 4GB, I think this could still work out because it may further emphasize the point that the 6500 XT should have launched with more video memory or at least had an alternate model with more. We'll also be getting a detailed look at the performance between two cards that were released roughly six years apart at similar price points, the 8GB 480 being 230 on release. These are the core specs of the system I used to benchmark these cards. Cards. I have a 5600X in there because it was between that or last gen's Ryzen 9 3900X and the 5600X is better suited to force the bottleneck onto the graphics card based on the titles and graphics settings chosen. For the benchmarks, I'll have the RX 480 results shown on the left as a reference, and those results were obtained using PCIe Gen 4. I cross-checked performance on Gen 3 and found that the difference was negligible because the RX 480 is a 16 lane card. So in the interest of fitting it all on the screen and for the purposes of this video, we can call them the same. In the center, I'll have the RX 6500 XT tested on PCIe Gen 3, which I bet makes up the majority of current PC gamers out there. And on the right, we'll have the 6500 XT tested on PCIe Gen Gen 4, which will be relevant to the people who own newer hardware that support it. And for a bit of background information as to why this was done, just a couple of days after AMD announced the 6500 XT, VideoCards.com broke a story about its PCIe limitations to just four lanes uh, based on detailed images from ASRock's product page, which was also confirmed by its specs table. Literally most of the connectors at the PCIe interface are not active, and there are no traces going to them, which limits how fast data can be transferred. So a lot of people were confused as to why AMD did this, with some expecting this to be a huge performance hit for the card, uh, while others wrote it off as just being fine if you're on PCIe Gen 4 because it's the same data throughput as 8 lanes on PCIe Gen 3. The issue here is for the people out there who have the motherboards or CPU or motherboard CPU combos that are limited to PCIe Gen 3, because they're gonna be limited to four PCIe lanes on Gen 3. Even cards as old as like the RX 460, which was very entry level cheap, um, that still had times eight. Let's see how this affects the numbers though. 
We'll start off with some synthetic benchmarks. In 3D Mark Bar Strike, during the run, we see that the 6500 XT does consistently run at higher FPS than the RX 480, with little to no difference between PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 results, and this is reflected in the final graphics score with the 6500 XT leading by 12% in both cases and are within a fraction of a percent of each other. While Gen 3 and Gen 4 being almost identical is good news here, I can't say the same about the overall performance. A $200 graphics card releasing in 2022 scoring only 12% higher than a similarly priced graphics card from 2016 isn't really anything to celebrate about. Also, I do have test data from the 5500 XT from a previous video, which scored just above 15,000 points with a modest 100 MHz overclock. So that's definitely not good that it scores so close given that it's a previous gen product released over two years ago and was released for cheaper. Moving on to Time Spy, we see similar trends to Fire Strike. During the run, the 6500 XT in both scenarios have a noticeable FPS lead over the RX 480, and when we go to look at the final graphics score, they lead by more than 20%, though this time, the PCI Gen 4 run does have a slight lead over the Gen 3 score, which was seen consistently across multiple runs. Comparing that to the slightly overclocked 5500 XT from my previous testing, the 5500 XT actually scored over 5000 points, which while it was only 1% higher than the 6500 XT shown here, is not a good sign. For the last synthetic benchmark, we have Unigen Superposition, which I basically saw the same trend. Both instances of the 6500 XT lead over the RX 480, with the PCIe Gen 4 run barely edging out the Gen 3 run. While this may look good up front, again comparing it to the 5500 XT results I had from last year, the 5500 XT leads by a fair amount. I'm not sure if I'm going crazy here because I didn't have anyone else to ask for reference for what they got and scores. This was all from my own findings. So if I'm missing something here, let me know. But if not, then I think we kind of have a problem here. The first game we're going to look at is one that generally performs well no matter what the system is, Rainbow Six Siege. With this test, we see very alarming results. The RX 480 actually beats the 6500 XT, no matter what PCIe generation it's running, and there's a noticeable performance difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4. What's really hard to distinguish from these results is how much of it is due to the additional VRAM that the RX 480 has to allocate versus how much is due to the restricted PCIe lanes or the memory bus and bandwidth. I want to make it clear that these results were consistent across multiple runs. They're not extreme outliers and the 8GB 480 does indeed win hands down every time. I don't know if this is an issue with premature drivers on the 6500 XT or what, but this is not a good look. In Doom Eternal, the RX 480 once again wins by pretty similar margins as Rainbow Six Siege. In this instance, while the video memory allocation differences are noticeable with the RX 480 going above 4 gigabytes, it's not as big of a difference as we saw in Rainbow Six Siege. And overall, the performance is still drastically different in favor of the RX 480, and again, it's still hard to say if the amount of video memory is a big factor in this, or if it's the restricted PCIe lanes. Taking a look at Fortnite, we have much better results, with the 6500 XT performing over 30% better than the RX 480, regardless of which PCIe generation though Gen 4 does have a slight lead over Gen 3. This is going to be one of the few instances where this actually occurs of the titles tested. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, the 6500 XT has mixed results relative to the 480, depending on if the test was run on Gen 3 or Gen 4. Gen 4 sees a 20% performance uplift, whereas Gen 3 actually performs a few percent worse. It's still playable, but again, this isn't a good look for AMD making this a 4 lane card. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see a similar trend as Forza, where the 6500 XT Gen 3 performance falls short of the 480, but the Gen 4 performance is a bit higher, though not by much. Looking at the VRAM allocation, they look to be similar across the board, so I would rule that out as the reason for the lackluster performance from the 6500 XT, which kind of points to either the 4 lane limitations or the bus width and bandwidth. Halo Infinite is a newer release and for benchmarking I found the replay feature to be very valuable for side by side comparisons like this because you could recreate the exact same scene with results representative of the live match. Here we see the performance benefits a lot from using a modern graphics card. I cross reference other results that people posted online for Halo Infinite running on the RX 480 and RX 580 and then compare those results to something newer like the RX 5500 XT and I found that what we're seeing here does agree with what I found online with the older card cards falling behind, and similar to Fortnite, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 performance differences are very small. Last but not least, I checked out Cyberpunk 2077 in which the 6500 XT barely beat the RX 480 when it was run on Gen 4, and when it was run on Gen 3, performance fell a fair amount under the 480. 
looking at the video memory allocation between the results, the RX 480 is the highest by a noticeable amount, but it wasn't over four gigabytes. So the PCIe lane restriction would be my best guess as to the culprit of the poor performance. I actually have results for the 5500 XT in Cyberpunk for the exact same run at the exact same resolution and graphic settings. The performance difference actually ends up being pretty small, which is really not a good look for the 6500 XT considering the 5500 XT system had an i3 10100F in it, slower speed system memory, and less system memory. These are all things that should be going against it, yet it still performs very similar. From what I could put together, this actually looks like a rebadge of the 5500 XT, except with only half the PCIe lanes, with half the memory bus and bandwidth, two display outputs removed from the back here, and no hardware encoding. Yes, you only get two ports back here, one display port and one HDMI port. So you're limited to running two monitors off of this card, whereas the 5500 XT had four ports to run more monitors, and this doesn't have hardware encoding. Sure, AMD's hardware encoding was never as popular as Nvidia's NBank encoder, but at least you used to have an option. Now you don't. This seems like an actually worse product at a higher price. Yes, I understand that the pandemic happened. Yes, I understand the supply chains and overall labor force have been affected. Yes, I understand that tariffs have affected prices. Even with all those things considered, I don't know if the choices that they made to cut this card down as much as they did was the move. Put some of that stuff back in and set the price like to 250 to compete with the RTX 3050. I don't see a lot of people buying this card because it's good or even because it's decent. I see them buying it because they can't find any better and they're sick of waiting, assuming that this even stays in stock, we'll have to see. And they're truly settling if they buy this card. I really wanted the 6500 XT to be an easy recommend. I wanted it to be a light at the end of the tunnel, but it just isn't. People will literally salivate at the thought of a good $200 brand new graphics card, especially after what we've been through for the last almost two years. For this to come out and be what it is, I'm really curious to see if anyone will actually have a positive take on this card. I look forward to seeing all the other reviews once the embargoes lift because I just can't see any angle where this is actually pushed as a good card aside from it staying in stock and being actually $200. But even with those things, if you weigh the pros and cons, the list of cons just seem to outweigh it. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video though. I hope you found this helpful and informative. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about this card down in the comments below. This, <laughs> this honestly feels like a low that we haven't seen in a while. Like, I think this ranks down there with the whole GT 1030 DDR4 <laughs> fiasco. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on this card. I want to thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. And I want to thank the channel members for their above and beyond support as always. Uh, quick reminder that the official merch for the channel is available and you can find all that information down in the description. And yeah, I'll see you all down in the comments as well as in the next stream and or video. Take care. Bye.